let's bring in Kevin Hassett. He's former Council of Economic Advisors chair, and he is author of The Drift, Stopping America's Slide to Socialism. Always happy to give that book credit. And I, let's talk about the slide, to, <laughs> Thanks, the slide to socialism, because I think the market and voters are going to stop the slide. I don't think the, the Biden administration is just in flat out denial about what's going on. So they're, they're not going to change direction at all. No. It's going to be the voters and the market. I think that combination is going to do it. What do you think? Well, you know, I, I hope you're right, but the fact is that America is pretty much evenly divided, and sadly, you know, the Biden administration has taken the power that voters gave them and enacted a whole bunch of economic policies that have driven the economy into the ground. And I think that the Dallas Fed that you, a study that you mentioned, you know, highlights something that we see in the data all around us, that right now we have about the worst economy that we've had by some measures in a couple of decades, by some measures all the way back uh, to World War II. Yeah. And so we've got high inflation, wages aren't keeping up, people can't afford uh, to spend the money they need to bought, buy what they bought last year. And so real GDP is declining. Right. You know, we've been in a recession since January. Third quarter GDP is looking like it might not quite be negative. It might be a little positive. But the economy is flat uh, and people are worse off now uh, than they were when Joe Biden took office. Well, Kevin, and so he's out there, you know, pitching that story that he's pitching, but yeah. it's just inconsistent with the yeah, data. I, I don't remember. You mentioned World War II. I don't remember World War II, but I do remember Jimmy Carter. Uh, it, that was the first election I voted in, as a matter of fact, the, the, the one that he, uh, uh -huh. that he lost. And, and he lost partly because of that malaise speech, where at least he had the honesty to recognize that the United States was in a malaise. Instead, from this administration, the situation's in many ways uh, just as bad, in some ways even worse, I think, in terms of energy, et cetera. Uh, but he's talking about progress and how little by little the folks are getting better. I mean, this denial is very worrisome in my mind. Right. Well, and it could be a master class in politics, right? Like, so it could be if you level <laughs> right. the American people right, right now about what's going on, then, you know, you get run well, out Carter of town. Well, Carter did, Carter did lose. Is that the yeah. things that he, <clears throat> yeah, he did. And, and, but, but if you think about it, if you go uh, thing by thing, that Joe Biden is much worse than Jimmy Carter. So, yeah. for example, Jimmy Carter, people forget, he started deregulation before Ronald Reagan. That's now, true. Ronald Reagan accelerated it, but Jimmy Carter called himself a deregulator. Uh, inflation wasn't as high yeah. as it's been over the last year. What do you think is worse, the Iranian hostage rescue that didn't work or Afghanistan? Boy, that's like, a tough one, If you list yeah. the things one by one, you know, yes. Biden is, gosh, I wish we had Jimmy Carter uh, and, instead of Biden. You know, the, the most severe cut in pay that Americans have seen in 25 years and the trajectory, as you suggest, is even worse. I mean, the trajectory is much worse. Food, just uh, food alone, is, is uh, increased 13.5% in terms of the in-home food that we have to consume. Uh, it's, it's really hurting the most basic needs and necessities that Americans have. You're right, David. And, and the other way to think about it is that uh, the Fed uh, rate hikes, which are out there because inflation is out of control and it's appropriate for the Fed to do so, have yet to really have a full effect on the economy. And so the recession that we saw over the first half of right. the year was not because of the Fed tightening. It was because inflation jumped up so much that real incomes declined. And so there's going to be another shoe to drop. As bad as wages have been, you know, over the last 12 months, it's going to get worse, sadly, over the next 12 months because Fed policy is going to take this weak economy, this shallow recession, yeah. and likely turn it into a deep I, I one. Want to and, get and more... virtually everybody who watches Wall Street is saying that. I want to get yeah, more in the Fed in, in a second, but I first want to talk about something that's overlooked. We talk about American workers as we should, first and foremost, but American savers are getting killed too. The 401ks have just been going through a terrible time, particularly in the last couple of months as the market's been going down. I mean, the, you look at since, since Biden came into office, he did have that initial bump in the markets I'm talking about, but then that, that has come down and we are now at levels, if you add NASDAQ in with, with the Dow Industrials and S&P, we're down over 10% in the markets, plus you add on, it's a double whammy, you add on the inflation kick that we get, the kick in the pants, I mean, and, and it's, you're, you're looking at losses of your 401ks in terms of real value down well over 20%, in some cases a 30% loss. It's really hurting the retired folks out there. 
Yeah, you know, you're, you're exactly right. And, and the fact is that, that homes uh, are about to head to the same place that equities have been uh, heading because mortgage rates are now so high. You know, they're closing in on 7%. And with mortgage rates that high, then all of a sudden people stop buying houses. And so home prices drop as well. And so I think you're right that probably by the end of the year, when we get the federal funds, uh, flow of funds data from the Federal Reserve, it's going to say that Americans have lost about 30% of their wealth this year uh, because of Joe Biden's failed policies. Yeah, I think that's really about terrible. right. All right, the Fed. It looks to me like what the administration is doing, they, they kind of led the, the Fed down the garden path and said, oh, you guys are free to do whatever you do. Now they're essentially setting up the Fed as the bad guys. The, the only person or the only group of people responsible for the recession, according to the administration, I see that coming, is, is the Fed. That's what they're going to do. Are, is there some truth to that? I mean, is the Fed... Could the Fed avoid a recession, even though it doesn't have a, a fiscal policy being done right by the administration? You, you know, what you have to do is look at the chain of causality back to the beginning and sort of say, well, who started this? And who started this is Joe Biden with his runaway spending. And that created the inflation that has caused the Fed to have to do what the Fed has to do. And so, you know, I, I think that in the end right now, the Fed is going to make it worse. But they're doing that because they're fighting an inflation that Biden's policy started. And, and you don't have to. This is, this is one thing I think a lot of even people uh, uh, like Larry Summers and everything who have problems with what, uh, what's happening with the administration, they're vocal about those problems, even though they're Democrats. They think that the only way to cure inflation is by killing the economy, essentially, by, by rate hikes that will put us into a recession, put millions more people out of work. You, you don't have to have a recession to get things working again. We saw that with the Reagan administration. Once the tax cuts of the Reagan administration kicked in and we had that stimulus to the private sector, even though you had the high rates from the Fed, you had a recovery uh, that right after the, the tax cuts kicked in that was was a low inflation recovery or, or a lower reflation recovery. Right. right. And, and, and the economics of it is just this, that, that when the Fed tightens, it raises the cost of demand. So like if you want to borrow money to buy a car, it costs more. So you buy fewer cars. But it also raises the cost of supply. If you want to borrow money to buy a new machine, if you run a factory, then that costs more too. And so demand goes down and supply goes down, but demand goes down faster. So inflation eventually starts to be under control. If you had a supply side tax cut or some other positive supply side policy while the Fed was hiking, then supply would be going up, demand would be going down, and then they'd get closer yeah. to where they need to be to have prices in line. Right. And so it's a big mistake to have uh, monetary policy do it alone. Absolutely. It's it's final point I got to make with you on Ben Bernanke getting the Nobel Prize for economics. Uh, uh, I, I went back and I was kind of interested in what you thought about Ben Bernanke's policy. I found this letter that you and a number of other economists wrote <laughs> to Ben Bernanke in 2010. Tw uh, that's 12 years ago. You, you were talking about the, the large scale asset purchase plan, the, the quantitative easing as it was known. And you said, we disagree with the view that inflation needs to be pushed higher, which was part of their plan, and worry that another round of asset purchases with interest rates still near, near zero over a year into the recovery will distort financial markets and greatly complicate future Fed efforts to normalize monetary policy. It looks like what you were forecasting came true. I, I have to say, Kevin, you, you, yeah. you look like you, were, you, you foresaw what, what is happening now. Yeah, I got to say, first of all, Ben Bernanke is a great academic and his academic work. I would give him a Nobel Prize for that. Uh, but they, you know, they mentioned his Federal Reserve policy. I think there's still open debate about whether he did the right thing. I worried that inflation would eventually get out of control and it would be very hard to get back under control. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. I think the unusual thing is that they specifically mention the actions of a policymaker in the Nobel Prize that in the past has been a purely academic thing. That's the thing that kind of jumps yeah. out at me. But again, on academics alone, I, I, I'd vote for Ben. But we're still not selling. We're still not selling the assets. I mean, what you warned about 12 years ago, right. we're still not doing it. That's part of the problem, right? That's right, and that's why inflation's out of control. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I think that he would argue that it was an emergency, and they were, you know, trying in the fog of war to keep us from having a great right. depression and. 
like we don't know if we would have had a Great Depression. I would have let stuff default and right. then let the market work itself out. Yeah. You know, maybe Warren Buffett would have owned half more of the economy than he does already, <laughs> that's right? True. But, but people that's true. And buy stuff and default. You know, it, 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 that, that's how capitalism works. And it was a fun party while it lasted, right? Kevin, good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.